The following may contain language and subject matter which is not appropriate for all audiences. Yeah, there's a lot in here. It's warm outside, though. Yeah. It's humid. I don't know why. Because California is a sunshine state, I guess. That's Florida. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you said low fat podcast, right? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Not no fat podcast. <laughs> wrong facts podcasts. Oh, my God. We're recording. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us once again here on the Low Facts Podcast. Matt and Dave with our new millennial friend, Andy. Hello. And, uh... Wow, he's got a different voice all of a sudden. He does. He's all manly and bass. I'm overcompensating. I'm a little nervous. That's okay. <laughs> and uh, in case, just because we're not on camera or anything, it is hotter than a mother in here. I feel like I'm doing a podcast out of a sweat box. Do you have personal experience with sweat boxes? With the hot boxes? Uh, no, just uh, just I watched her crazy an awful lot. So, <laughs> I've I've seen I've seen scenes where people have been in them, but uh, I prefer to go to the sauna. I love stir crazy. You never seen stir crazy? No. Yeah, you have. Was it a movie? Yeah, it's a movie with Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. I don't remember that about movie. the convicts that have the rodeo and escape from prison. What year was that? Oh, uh, like. 80s? I feel like every 80s movie is, they're all super sweaty. There's a lot of cop movies where they're always sweating. Like, the, their chief's, like, fucking soaked all of a sudden. Like, this this is the first scene you're already wet. <laughs> well, yeah, the, I'm a little uncomfortable with it. Well, the 80s were a hotter time, and it is might be... air conditioning in the 80s? Well, I think it's an argument against climate change, because apparently, according to the movies, they were a lot, it was a lot hotter back in the United States in the 80s. Well, they, they used to be called global warming, but now they call it climate change because it can get colder to... I, I see. I, I'm just not in on the on the on the lingo. Yeah, that was the argument. It's, it's 40 degrees outside. Cool climate is real, not real. <laughs> well, that was. I guess that's why the reason, that's why they changed it from global warming to climate change, right? Because back in the 90s, when it was global warming, there was that whole there was that 10 year spell right after Kyoto. After the Kyoto Climate Accords, there was a 10 year spell where there was just cool weather. <laughs> <laughs> that's when climate change was worth it. Yeah, I guess. I guess. I miss that. Too. Really? I like cold. I do too. Why are you in California? I ask myself that all the time. Besides I'm, the fact that I was born here. Well, I'm in California because I like cold, but my joints don't like cold and because I'm an old guy. I need the I need the warm weather to lubricate up the joints. <laughs> yeah, lube it up, bro. Exactly. Wow. Kinda I feel a little dirty all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, man, what the hell? It's probably the sweat. Must must be. It's kind of funny when you hang out with someone in a different context and then you get on a podcast and then you realize that they're a reprobate. <laughs> okay. Allegedly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what were we talking about today? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Can you... Uh, so the question that I wrote that I, I have no idea now is can you, uh, can you pick your morality? And yeah, I was going to let you guys kind of go with it or do you guys want to know what I meant? What do you mean? Okay. <laughs> I'm not the brightest tool uh, in the shed. I'm not even sure if I said sharpest that. Sharpest knife in the drawer? Sharpest knife in whose door? In the drawer. Oh, drawer. <laughs> See, I'm really that stupid. Okay. Well, maybe I didn't enunciate. But no, so like, so like uh, everyone has or is taught some sort of morality, whether it's religious or cultural. And when I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, everybody lies. But... Universally, lying is considered an immoral thing. But, so, if you lie, does that make you immoral? So I guess the real question is, is morality an all or nothing type thing? I would definitely say morality is not just a black and white subject. It's kind of, there's a lot of gray in it. You think so? I think so. Going back to what you talked talking about lying, like, what's a little white lie to a child? Am I, am I a horrible person because I told my kid they're not going to die at the age of four? They're not going to die at the age of four. Yeah, if I lie to them, like, am I a bad person for that? Like, I don't know if I should be telling a two-year-old that their life is limited. That they could get killed any yeah. second? Yeah, like, there's there's some truths maybe they're not ready for yet. And I guess it, I'd be a bad person for telling them that truth so early, wouldn't I? Well, is there a situation where the, the choices are you can tell them, like like, you have to tell them the truth or you lie to them? Well, 
I don't know, like, wouldn't it be pretty damaging to, like, well, because kids ask a lot of questions. Why, mm-hmm. why, why, why? So eventually it's going to come to a subject where you get a little uncomfortable with it. How, do, how was I made, Mommy? I'm not going to say, well, the dick goes straight into the vagina. And it, and like, I don't, think okay. I, should, I don't think I should be saying that so early. Well, yeah, well, well, probably because the kid's not going to be ready for it, number one. Sure. Is, is what you were saying. Yeah, that's why, like, um, I don't think I'm a bad person for lying to a kid. Yeah, so, so what I was more thinking about was... When I when I laid it out, is morality an all or nothing thing? And I I personally came to the conclusion that yes, it is. It's an all or nothing thing. But we're never going to get there. Oh, okay, okay. You so the goal. so you know, imperfect as we are, we're never going to be able to tell the truth all the time. We're never going to be able to not steal, not not you know. Well, maybe, but. If, faced, if, 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 if put in a situation where you're going to have to infringe on, upon someone else's property rights, like let's say you're starving and you see someone with a sandwich, at some point someone's going to be driven to knock that other person out and take their sandwich, which would be considered immoral. But, you know, is that, is that a valid excuse? That, that, and that, and the, the self-defense thing comes to mind a lot too. Like if someone, if someone comes to try and kill you and you happen to kill them, is that okay? Universally, everyone says, yeah, everyone has a right to self-defense. But if you think about it in a vacuum, you're like, well, you're killing someone. Thou shalt not kill. So, That's the big one. But, there, but yeah, so, so yes, Andy, you're right. There's definitely lots of nuance to it. But, but how can it, if, if there is lots of nuance, then how can it be all or nothing? Because it's not all or nothing. You just said everybody lies, right? So Everybody does lie. Well, then that's not, Daily. All, or, it's not all or nothing. I lied earlier. <laughs> I mean, I think you're expected to lie. Like uh, at work. Or, or just face kind of a thing. Or yeah. Or act a certain way. Or, you know, just platitudes, right? Oh, you look good today. Or how are you doing? Fine. Do you tell ugly people they look good today? Uh, that's, a, that's a healthy lie. You're helping someone's confidence who probably doesn't. I it. might, yeah. Or, or But just the platitudes of like, how are you doing? Most people say fine or great. Or that's a nice haircut. Even if, yeah, even if they're not, right? I mean, you're not going to say, well, actually, as a matter of fact, like I had a pretty bad morning and, you know, my fa- you know, I got a really sick family member. And I mean, at that point, the person's like, <laughs> I really wish I didn't well, ask you that. <laughs> I wasn't really asking you how you're feeling, right? I mean, no, definitely. Well, unless it's a friend. Excessive truth is what I probably would call that. Too much. You're revealing too much of yourself. Yeah, yeah. It gets a little uncomfortable. But if you're moral if, for doing this, if you say, fine, you might not be fine. That's a lie. Right? It's a lie. Sure. It's a lie for your benefit. And, yeah, but there, there are all kinds of rationalizations for it. Like I said, there are all kinds of nuances, but that's because we can't not do it. It's human nature. Maybe. But how is it all or nothing? Well, intellectually, it is all or nothing. <laughs> if you were a perfect being... Jesus. Okay, if you want to go religious, yeah. If you're a perfect being, like God, then yeah. To God, a lie is just as bad as murder. Because God is perfect. Right? Mm-hmm. But to us down here, which, which, as far as I can tell, we are far from perfect. So, you know, a white lie that spares somebody is actually for the greater good. Or so you say. So you can make lying like a good thing if you do it for the right reason. And that leads to the whole morality is all or nothing because in the end you're trying to do something good. So the action, what, justifies the means kind of a thing? Um, I think, I think uh, the, well, <laughs> we need the bell. Saul Alinsky. Communism. Well, no, he, he was, he was actually, he was well, actually a socialist. But but that that was that was his point. It, it's a question that I like to ask people, you know, is the ends worth it justifies the means? Right, right. And the way I see things, or the way I've seen things, is the closer you are to something, then yes, absolutely. But the farther removed you are from it, then you're like, no, the ends doesn't justify the means, and this is why. And then you're like, but what if you're in this situation? But I'm not. So blah blah. Like whatever. the hungry guy wanting the sandwich. Sure. Um, or or the. Or the, the, the killing. Now, at the, in the end, 
if someone if someone comes to kill you and you kill them, the the net result is there's a death, which is considered bad. But from your point of view, you know that other person's death is okay because it serves my purposes. It was necessary. Exactly. I didn't ask. I didn't ask for this person to come attack me. I just defended myself, and they just happened to pick the wrong guy. <laughs> if somebody attacked me, I don't think I'd. I'd probably just try and run away. That's that's a smart thing. But then people will call you a coward. Well, Who it's not cares? Wrong. Kid. <laughs> Who cares? And then they're immoral for being funny. You. <laughs> you know, I I can I can deal with being called a coward all day long. Honestly, it doesn't really bug me. Exactly. I always think of the candid camera things where there's that one guy that like everybody else kind of freezes, and that one guy just like sees the bad thing happening and just just runs. I call that guy the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> probably. <laughs> That guy's gonna survive. He's gonna live. Looking out for number one. But sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't. I, I'm sure if there's like a, a there's gonna be situations where there's there's not enough running is not an option. So in that situation, you would have to defend yourself, right? So so are you so so Andy? You're of the opinion that you can pick and choose, right? I think you, yeah. I think you have to pick and choose. It's too complicated to ever. Well, what about you? I think it's almost impossible to be moral all the time. So, um, I think I'm, I'm pick and choose as well. Well, there you have it. Two to one. And morally, two to one wins, right? Um, I don't know. But you, so you think it's... Is essentially you see like black and white kind of a thing? No, intellectually, yeah, it's black and white, but life is not black and white. It's great. And that, that actually leads us to another podcast topic that we can come to you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining us, Andy.